Everybody, it's Mickey and in today's video we are keeping our kitchen nice and cool and we are using our crock pots for some delicious meals we all know the benefits of using our crock pots through those cold months but there are some real big payoffs to pulling our crock pots out in the summer so if you are new here I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe I put out new videos every week about all things home I have the best summertime crock pot meal. This is for peach chicken and you use fresh peaches. You use about a pound of chicken breast. You need a white onion and a bunch of different seasonings. Today we're going to be using garlic powder, some Mrs. Dash. I have some red pepper flakes here, paprika, sea salt and black pepper and you're going to need about a quarter of a cup and maybe like another tablespoon of balsamic vinegar i have my crock pot all set up with a liner i'm going to season um, my chicken with some salt and pepper garlic powder i might add like a little bit of ranch seasoning in there with a little bit of basil and paprika to start off this recipe, we are going to chop up our peaches and our onion. This is such a great recipe um, for summer because you get to use some fresh fruit. And this is also a good recipe if you get some peaches that are a little bit hard. This is a great way to use them up if you don't have the patience to let them ripen on their own. You can use anywhere from like four peaches up to six peaches in this recipe, you know, depending on how much chicken that you make up. Today, I think I'm just going to use probably five peaches. So we're just gonna take some time and chop these up. Today I am using a crock pot liner, but you can also spray the inside of your crock pot with a good nonstick spray. First thing in the crock pot today, we are going to be putting a layer of the onion and then topping that with the peaches. So in my crock pot, I have a layer of the sliced onion. I have my chopped peaches and I'm going to go ahead and put in a whole teaspoon maybe a little bit more of garlic powder. I'm going to do a teaspoon of kosher salt and about a fourth of a teaspoon of the red pepper flakes. We'll go ahead and add the balsamic vinegar. Give that a little bit of a mix and then we're going to lay in our chicken. And again, I have already seasoned my chicken with paprika, salt and pepper, garlic powder, Mrs. Dash. And then once we get this all in, we're gonna cover the chicken a little bit with the mixture. Then we are going to cover and cook on high 
for three to four hours or low five to six hours. So it's been about four hours. I've had my chicken cooking here. For that first hour, I always put it on high and then I lower the temperature to low. And we are going to take the lid off. and check the temperature with a meat thermometer and we'll see where we are. It is, smells so good. All right, so we are already, we're going right up to 211, so we are more than done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this chicken out of the crock pot, shred it up, I've already chopped up um, another peach. I have some fresh basil here that we're going to use to sprinkle on top. I've made a little bit of white rice and I have some peas cooking away. So we're gonna shred up the chicken and plate it up and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all ready to eat. This is our crock pot peach chicken all ready for dinner. It is just the right combination of savory and sweet. The chicken was so tender, it took nothing to shred it up. I've chopped up some more fresh peaches and a little bit of basil. It is just such a great combo. Now I have mine on top of some white rice, but you can also make this into a sandwich. You can add it to some pasta. It's a really versatile dish. You didn't heat up your kitchen and you are ready for a delicious meal. So this next recipe is for um, creamy, ranch spinach chicken. I think that's what I'm gonna call it today. This was one of those happy accidents that occurred when I was cleaning out my refrigerator and I just wanted to make dinner from, you know, what I had left over. And it was so good that I'm going to try and recreate it for you guys today. So for this recipe, we are going to start off with about a pound or pound and a half of chicken breast. I have mine cut in half here. They're seasoned with um, salt, pepper, garlic powder, Mrs. Dash, and some paprika. You're also going to need some fresh spinach. I just have a little bit left over in my um, container here. You're going to need a block of softened Philadelphia cream cheese. You'll need some ranch seasoning, some garlic powder, um, some vegetable or chicken broth, whatever you have on hand, and you'll need some skinny spaghetti. I have my crock pot all prepped with a crock pot liner. I'm gonna add my chicken to the bottom. I have it cut in half because I just think that it cooks a little bit quicker and thoroughly. And if you're going to shred it anyway, it just kind of does half the job for you. So to this, we are going to add some garlic powder a little bit of extra to season our dish. And we are going to use a packet of ranch dressing or just whatever you have on hand. Usually a packet of ranch dressing equals about three tablespoons of the loose seasoning. So we're gonna put, I think we're gonna do like two heaping teaspoons in here. And then I'm going to add probably at least two cups of our chicken broth or our vegetable broth. Whatever you guys have on hand will work just fine. Just to add a little bit of moisture to our crock pot. Chicken cooks in a crock pot pretty quickly and I like to cook it for about an high and then I turn it down and it's usually somewhere between like two, two and a half hours on low. So our chicken should be about done. It has been taking a little bit longer. I think maybe my crock pot is getting a little old. So we are going to check the temperature 
And as long as it's about at least, I like to see it at like 180, I think that is the best shredding temperature. It should be pretty good. So we'll use, oh yeah, we're good. We're at 192 and going up. So this is ready to get all shredded up. So I'm gonna take it off the heat and shred it. And then I have my block of Philadelphia cream cheese here. It's been sitting out, so it's nice and room temperature. So we're gonna add that to the pot. We're gonna add some spinach, and I have some pasta cooking on the stove. So I returned my shredded up chicken back into the crock pot. I am going to add a little bit of spinach, fresh spinach on top. Because we just want this to wilt a little bit. And then I'm going to put our cooked and drained pasta on top of that and we'll mix it all up. So I went ahead and I mixed the softened cream cheese up with the noodles, the chicken, and I'm going to put the lid on it and let it sit for a few minutes before we serve it up. So I went ahead and I turned the lights on in my dining room here. We are getting so many storms this week and it looks like another one is rolling in. So I wanted to share with you our creamy chicken spinach pasta. It is such a good quick recipe and one that you can use anytime you have you know, a bunch of ingredients in your kitchen you're not quite sure how you're going to use. You can add broccoli to this, you could add asparagus to this. Spinach is just super simple for us. I always have it in the refrigerator and it wilts so quickly and it's perfect for this kind of meal. So normally when I'm sharing recipes with you guys, these are usually recipes that you know, I have made over and over again, they're all family approved, but this one I've never made before, but I found it online and I thought it sounded a lot like a chocolate pudding cake that my aunt used to make when we were kids. So I found this recipe for slow cooker brownie pudding on crazy for crust. Dot com. I will leave a link to it down below for you, but I thought we can try this together in real time and see how it comes out. So what this is, it's for um, a pudding brownie recipe that is supposed to be really good, topped with some vanilla ice cream and peanuts and all those good things. So for this recipe, you are going to need a brownie mix. This is the one that I always use. I love Duncan Hines. I think they have the best brownie, box brownie mix out there. And you're just supposed to um, make this brownie mix as you normally would from the instructions on the back of the box. You're going to need some instant um, chocolate pudding. I just have Jell-O brand here and two cups of milk. So we are going to mix up our brownie mix. I'm just using the instructions on the back of the box. I'm adding two thirds of a cup of vegetable oil. I have three tablespoons of water and I have two eggs and I'm just going to mix this up. One of the reasons why I included this recipe in our summer crock pot video is because I had said that it reminded me of a cake my aunt used to make, um, chocolate pudding cake, and we loved this as kids. They had a big pool in their backyard and we would go over to swim me and you know, 16 of my cousins would go over and swim at their house all summer long. And that cake always reminds me of summer because she would make it pretty much every week for us. And it was so good, especially, you know, right out of the oven with ice cream and, you know, some whipped cream on it. It was just delicious. So this recipe really reminded me of it. I have my crock pot all prepped here with a crock pot liner. And if you don't use crock pot liners, I would just spray the inside of your crock pot really well with some nonstick spray. So I'm going to add our mixed up brownie mix. 
to the crock pot here. You want to get every last drop and then we're just going to smooth it out to cover the bottom of the crock pot. So in another bowl, you're going to empty your box of Jello. Now this is a little bit of a larger box than the recipe called for. I'm thinking I'm probably just going to use the whole thing because I'm keeping the amount of milk that the recipe called for the same. So maybe I'll put just about the whole thing. And then as you add the milk, you're supposed to whisk it all together until it starts to thicken a little bit. We're gonna take our pudding and pour it all over the top of our brownie mix. Try to cover the whole, the whole thing. And then we are going to cover and cook on high for about three hours. But oops, before I do that, I want to add a paper towel to the top here to help collect you know, the condensation as it cooks so it doesn't just get dripped back into our recipe. So we're going to cover it and we're gonna cook on high for two to three hours. In the recipe, it said to check it at about two and a half hours, so that's what we're gonna do. So I've come down to the kitchen. It's been about two hours, but I have been upstairs and it smells like it's done to me. You know, like that brownie bakery smell. So the instructions say that the middle is going to stay somewhat jiggly and that when the edges look like they are dry, then it's all done. So why don't we take a peek and see what we think. So I don't know, I think it looks like it might be done. The edges look to me a little bit dry, at least over here they do. I might give it a few more minutes. The middle does look a little bit jiggly, but the outside of it does look dry and it kind of is pulling away when I move the liner a little bit. So I think I'm gonna give it about 10 more minutes, take another look at it and call it done. This is what our brownie pudding looks like, all plated up. I was really surprised. I mean, it only cooked for two hours and it was definitely done. So I would really watch it very closely, um, maybe check it at like an hour 45 minutes because mine at least in my crock pot was cooked all the way through. The brownie has a nice cakey consistency and the pudding part portion of it looks so creamy and delicious. I cannot wait to try it. I am really glad that I gave this recipe a try. I usually like to do a trial run at least one time before I share a recipe with you, but I thought this recipe was so quick and easy. It was worth giving it a try. If it didn't work out, it didn't work out, but it looks like it is delicious. This is a simple recipe to serve along with one of your summertime crock pot meals and you have like a full meal. You have your main course, you have your dessert, and you did not heat up your kitchen. So that's gonna do it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this summer lovin' crock pot recipe video. Check out the description box down below for any recipes and links mentioned in today's video. Please join our communities over on Facebook and Instagram at My Bashful Life. And please don't forget to subscribe. I'd love to have you all back as part of our YouTube family. 
So until I see you in that next video, I hope that you love the life that you have. Be kind to each other, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.